35 years, 420 months, 1,820 day, weeks, 12,775 days, 35 years. How does a person know, how does he or she know when it's time to retire or at least semi-retire? How does a man or a woman know when it's time to maybe slide over in a different lane and let somebody else that's younger and with renewed energy and more kind of creativity take the lead role in any organization, business or church? Today, my last Sunday as senior pastor here at TSC, next Sunday, Sam will be my pastor, Leanne's pastor, your pastor. And this morning, we'll be studying Joshua chapter 1, and in that chapter, we'll see Moses handing off leadership to Joshua. How did, how did Moses know that it was time to, to slip aside and step aside and let Joshua have the reins of leadership of Israel? How did Moses know that? Well, in Deuteronomy at the end, like God verbally spoke to him. That's how he knew. Now, God didn't verbally speak to me. He doesn't do that much or Really, he had never spoken to me audibly. So, uh, God can speak to me. He speaks by his word. He speaks by the Holy Spirit. And actually, sometimes God does speak audibly to me. And when that happens, I don't know if it's God's voice. It usually sounds a lot like Leanne. <laughs> now, this time, Leanne actually didn't have to say anything. She simply gave me a gift. And this gift kind of helped me think about, hey, you need to be thinking about who's going to take your place. Matter of fact, she gave me more than one gift, and I've got those two gifts in this bag. Now, what gift could Leanne give me to know that I'm kind of getting gray in the hair and probably soft in the brain? What kind of gift? Well, look, when your wife gives you a daily pill organizer... For all of your supplements and all of your medications, you know you're not a spring chicken anymore. Now, some of us are a little hard-headed, and we need, like Gideon, to put out a fleece. You know, it, you know, if the wool is wet on there and it's dry on the outside, yeah, it's you, God. And if it's the wool is dry and it's wet on the outside, it's you. So sometimes we need more than just one nudge. To, to, to make a move in life. That's a big move like this. Well, one more time, God spoke, not, not audibly to me from his voice and not even audibly from my wife's voice, but one morning, my wife gave me another gift. It is a Brookstone nose and ear hair trimmer. Now, how many times have you, out of my age, get up one morning and say, where in the world did that big bush of hair coming out of my ear come from and you just you try to cut it back with a weed eater but it's just too messy but if your wife guys will give you one of these you can just beat that back down that ear when you get a pill organizer and a nose and ear hair trimmer you know tom you better be looking for somebody to take your place i don't think that's exactly how it worked with moses but that's kind of how it worked with me you know today we we come to the last message that I'll preach. And uh, Leanne and I couldn't be more excited. We couldn't be more excited. Not, not because we're eager to leave you. We're, we're not leaving. We're not going anywhere. We're not getting out of the race. We're just not going to be in the center of the track. We're going to take an outside lane. Sam and Katie are going to be the lead runners. And we're going to chase hard after them, and we're going to put wind under their wings, and they're going to lead well. They're, they're gifted. They're capable. Sam is anointed. And we, we couldn't be more joyful that God has brought this couple to lead us. Today, <clears throat> I want you to take your Bibles and go to Joshua. And I'm actually preaching from the same scripture. And the truth be told, I'm preaching the same outline I preached 35 years ago on this Sunday. Because we have the same God and we have the same calling as a church. Connecting people with Jesus to experience his greater life. I want you to know that when we joined those eight people 35 years ago, uh, we didn't feel, today we don't feel any more called of God with several hundred or thousand. 
and call this church home than we did when there were a dozen. We don't feel any more valuable to the kingdom of God. God, God doesn't talk about size. He talks about heart. And uh, so if you lead a smaller ministry or a smaller class or you're involved in something that's not worldwide or world-renowned, just be faithful wherever you are. Be faithful wherever you are. The story of this succession plan from Moses to Joshua starts before chapter 1. It actually starts in, in the early years of Joshua's life. You remember Joshua and Caleb? The 12 spies? Ten were bad and two were good. Yeah, y'all ever been to Baptist or Methodist Sunday school? Ten were bad and two were good. God was training Joshua and Caleb for this day. Sam's been training at five and a half years at TSC. Intensely for about three and one years. But the training in Sam's life started far, far before he ever got to this church. Before he knew we existed. Before he knew Tom and Leanne existed. God started training Sam when he was born into an amazing family, Jennifer and David. God started training Sam when he was growing up in one of the fastest growing churches in America. And David and Jennifer, right before his eyes, built one of the greatest churches in America at Long Holler. You see, God knew before any of us knew that Sam would be taking this pulpit to lead this people for this amazing journey in this season. See, God always does things in order, and you can trust him. So I have no doubts, Leanne has no doubts that our greatest days are still ahead. So um, there are some similarities, many if you will, between Moses handing off to Joshua and uh, Tom handing off to Sam. But let me just say that I am amazingly thankful there is one stark difference as Moses handed off to Joshua, he died. Sam, I ain't planning on dying. I want to ride into the promised land on your coattails, brother. Okay? I ain't planning on dying just yet. I got a little more life in me. <clears throat> Very quickly, because time is short. In the 33rd chapter of, Mo of Deuteronomy, Moses prayed over his people and uh, just a prayer blessing and uh, it's going to be short but receive it from the Lord church would you just take your hands and turn them like this symbolically saying Lord we receive not Tom's blessing but God's blessing Leanne why don't you come and stand with me please Lord, we just bless your people. As Moses blessed the tribes of Israel, we bless the tribe of Thompson Station. We bless their coming in and going out. We bless their giving, their going, their praying, their serving. We bless them in everything, in mind and body and spirit. We bless them with protection of your almighty, sovereign, good hand. We bless them that they would think your thoughts and, and live out your plans for their lives. We bless Sam and Katie. We bless the senior leaders. We bless the staff. We bless the leaders and the volunteers and the servants from the youngest of our preschoolers to the, to the most mature of our senior adults. We bless everyone in the powerful name of Jesus that your work might be done across the streets, across the states, and across the seas to the glory of your name, to the advancement of your kingdom, to the saving of tens of thousands of souls until Jesus comes back. Lord, we bless your people for your glory. In the name of your Son, Jesus, our Savior. Amen and amen. And so Moses blessed the people in 33. And then God let him look over into the promised land and he died. I'm going to skip that part and let's go to Joshua 1. Okay? Joshua chapter 1, verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord spoke to Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross this Jordan into a land 
I am giving you the message today is the same message I preached 35 years ago on this day. Thompson Station Church, Sam, Katie, staff, leaders, members, family of TSC, go forward in victory. Listen, church. Listen, church. Yes, go forward in victory. You are not the tail. You are not the second. When you are in Christ, you are, you are men and women of God empowered by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Word of God, empowered by the call of God to be leaders in this world with the banner of Jesus over you as your march. Go forward in victory. Lord Jesus, bless this day, this message. Fill me with your spirit. Amen and amen. Go forward and possess the land. Go forward and possess the land. Verse 4, for the territory will extend from the desert and to the great river Euphrates, to the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea. Here's the message, TSE. God gave it to Joshua. God gives it to you. Get up and cross that river. Get up and cross that Jordan. Moses is dead, Tom's moving to a different seat, Sam's stepping up. Now, there's a river that has to be crossed. Forty years you were in the desert because of disobedience, but now is the opportune time to rise up and follow God into the glorious promised land. With clarity, crystal clarity, God said, get up, get ready, go forward, cross this river. That is a word for many of you individuals today. You've been stymied. You've been struggling. You've been hurting. You've had some wandering in a, in a wilderness experience. Now you want to take a step, but you're afraid. But, and there's a river before you, and it's at flood stage. I'm telling you, God's saying to you individual today, husband, father, mother, wife, God is telling you, get up and step out in faith. God's about to do something great in your life. And God's about to do something great in this church. Man, we've had some hard times. Israel came through some hard times. They've had 400 years of slavery. Then they had 40 years of disobedience, wandering. We've had some hard times, but every time. And Leanne and I have been knocked down. But every time, you know what we did? We just got up. Friends, sometimes in life, winning is just getting up. Sometimes in life, winning is just not quitting. And friends, you just get up and step forward in faith. I charge you, get up. And cross the river and walk over the land. Walk over the land. It's yours. I do not like the NIV translation. It is not contextually bound as the scripture in Hebrew says. In the third verse of Joshua 1, the NASB is much better. It is in the past tense. Listen to this. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads. Listen to this. I have given you past tense friends it's not God will give it to you it's God's already given it to you you simply take possession the money's in the bank go up to the teller and say I'm making a withdrawal friends how much has God got in store for you your family and this church and he's simply waiting for us to step into that every neighbor every neighborhood every nation and every part of this world we go with the gospel with prayers prayer walking loving on orphans feeding the hungry clothing the poor preaching the gospel God has given to us God's given it to us possess it wherever your foot treads and your boundaries they're without limits God gave the children of Israel a big promised land in verse 4 God has given us a big area locally right here Friends, we minister from Franklin and to Columbia and beyond. We minister from Dixon to Murfreesboro and beyond. God has given us a great location here. I wouldn't trade our location for any location in this community. And God planted this years and years ago on this corner. Thank you, Jesus. And our members and our money will go across the globe with the gospel. Go forward, TSC. And possess all that God has given you in the name of Jesus. Second thought, if you're taking notes at home or here on campus. TSC, go forward 
in God's strength. You don't do this in the strength of man. You can't do what we're talking about in the flesh. You, you, you want to drown in the Jordan? Jump out there in the flesh. <laughs> we'll throw you a life ring. You want to walk through on dry land? Go out in the Spirit. You'll see God work. Verse 5. Go forward in God's strength. No one, Sam, no one, Katie, no one, TSC, will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Just like I was with Moses and Tom and Leanne, I will be with you, Sam and Katie and TSC. I will never leave you or forsake you. Let that sink in. Friends, that's God talking to you today. Some of you came in here by accident. Some of you thought, oh, it'll be nostalgic. We'll be there for Tom's last sermon. Thanks for coming. <laughs> you don't need a word from Tom. If it's coming from me, it's not even getting past this table. If it's coming from God, it'll penetrate your heart. God says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. When's the last time you thought about that? God's in you. He's on you. About you. God loves you. Let God fill you. Let God empower you this very day. That word's not just for Joshua. That word's for you. That word's for your family. That word's for this church. It is the word of God. It never fails. Isaiah promises no word of God will ever return void. It will always bring forth God's desired result. I know God's desired result. I don't know the specifics, but I know God wants to bless you in his strength and his power to use you for the glory of his name. Would you be ready to receive that in the strength of God? God is with us, and he will prepare a way for us. He's with us and will prepare a way for us. No obstacle can stand in the way of God. Think about that. No mountain is too high, no valley too low, no river too wide or too deep. TSC is going forward in the strength of God. Okay, here it is. Moses has been leading. Joshua's been playing second. He's been in the second chair, been comfortable in the second chair. He's put in the first chair. Oh, Josh, your first assignment is to take two million people of across a raging river, and we don't expect any toddlers to be washed away, okay? Two million people across a raging river at flood stage in the rainy season. That's a hard task. So what, is, what does he do? Does he cry? Does he whimper? He say, it's too, God, bring Moses back. It's too hard. No, he doesn't. Let me tell you what he does. He speaks in faith. If you have your Bible, look at Joshua 3, 15. The 15th verse of Joshua 3 this is what happens. The Jordan's at the flood stage. And the priest who carried the ark, as soon as they reached the Jordan, their feet touched the water's edge. How did Joshua handle this raging water? Look back in verse 5. Joshua walked among the people, and he told the people, Consecrate yourselves. Get prayed up. Get in the Word. Confess your sin. Say, God, I'm willing. I'm waiting. I'm saying yes, whatever you say, God. We are with you, God. We're with you. When you do that, that's what Joshua's saying. Consecrate yourselves. And listen to this. He said, tomorrow. He said, tomorrow God will do amazing things among you. Sam, when you stand in this pulpit, I want you by faith to stand up and preach. TSC, tomorrow God's going to bring miracles in this house. Tomorrow, tomorrow, amazing things will be seen in your life. Preach with faith and expectancy. Some of us say, well, God doesn't answer my prayers. I might ask, do you believe that he'll answer your prayers? Some of those are because we lack faith. God, give us the faith. Think about that first priest. Did you hear what that said? It says when the priest put their foot in the water, it stopped way back at Adam. The first dude carrying, he's like, there's six guys carrying on these poles. And the guy who's front said, why, could, why did I get to be first today? Usually it's an honor to be up front. Today, am I going to get a snorkel? He put his foot in, believing that God had spoken through the leader. And when he did, it went from 30 feet to 25 feet to 18 feet to 8 feet to 2 feet to dry. The miracle doesn't happen when you stand back looking at the water from 15 yards saying, God, you dry off the water and I'll step in. God says, put your foot in in faith. That's when you'll see me work. Church, would you put your foot in the water and see God work? Put your foot in the water and watch God work amazing wonders among you. And you know what? What can we learn? 
What can we learn from this passage? Obstacles, when touched by God, fade away. What can we learn? The completeness of God's plans. God didn't bring them through 400 years of slavery and 40 years of wilderness to drown in the Jordan. He brought them 440 years for a promised land experience. God didn't bring TSC from nothing when it was about to shut its doors and no pastor would take it. Leanne and I didn't have enough sense not to take it. Two and a half years they looked for somebody to take it. Nobody. Everybody said no. We didn't have enough sense to say no. And look what God did. You see, God's not going to let his plans be thwarted. Leanne's been coaching me on that the last two weeks. The plans of the Lord will not be thwarted. Look it up. It's a great King James word. Thwarted means it will, they will not be stopped. They will not be aborted. They will not be stopped. And here's what I know. Philippians 1, 6. Being confident in this and the God that we serve, he who began a great work at TSC will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. Amen, church. Woo! God's at work. But I got to be honest. We, we want to preach with optimism and faith, but we preach with reality. Sam and Katie, family, friends, church, our loved ones, dear. The last thought I'd tell about that river is between every blessing of success and, and every victory, of the promised land coming, there's going to be a Jordan to cross. There'll be a struggle to fight through. But with God, we win. If you know me just a little bit, you know I hate to lose. Why would I choose any other side but God's side? Why? You've got to be the fool to choose any other side but God's side. He who spoke all that is into existence. He who makes the sun to rise in the east and set in the west. Why wouldn't I choose to be on his side? Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Joshua already knew what it was to be courageous. It, listen, Sam's not afraid. Joshua has led three military campaigns defeating over 30 armies. Joshua's ready. Sam's ready. This ain't his first rodeo. Don't you be afraid church Sam the only thing I want you to be afraid of is falling short of God's absolute best for you Katie Everett and this church be afraid be afraid not of failing be afraid of not trying you listen to me church and let that soak in don't you be afraid of failing be afraid of not trying the world is filled with failures because they didn't try the only failure in the walk with Christ is that we don't have enough faith to attempt great things for God because we serve a great God. My mama said, Tom, shoot for the moon because even if you miss, you land among the stars. Come on. Why would you and I have such teeny tiny goals as if our God is a little bitty God? It's an affront to God. Oh, church. We're going to reach 11 people in Thompson Station in 2024. And God says, don't talk to me like that. Don't talk to me like that. Is that how big you think God is? 11 people? You know what God's put on my heart for years and we've never done it? Why don't you do it this year? I pray there will be a New Testament church. A New Testament church says in in Acts, it says daily they were adding to those being saved and baptized in the church. That's three, six, five. You want to do something for the Lord? You want to make me happy? Baptize 365 this year. That's better than 11. Hmm, you got quiet up in here. Because that means you got to go share your faith. That means you got to go invite your neighbor to Easter, to VBS. To at the movies. It's on you. The possession's already there. God just say, are you going to walk on it? I, hey, I'm, listen, I haven't left my text. I haven't left my text. Leanne, come on up here. Look, I cannot believe it. I, I've so rarely done it in 35 years. I left out a whole point for y'all. Come on. Give me a little credit.
So I, uh, I read recently a story, a biography about a man named William Borden. And the book is Borden of Yale 09. This happened over, over a century ago. And Borden was a Yale student who became a missionary candidate to China. William Borden, you might recognize B-O-R-D-E-N, those of you who are older like me, uh, Borden Dairy Estate. Oh, far off. You're so far off, I lost you. And the, the dairy, dairy. And uh, upon the event of, uh, by the way, Borden, if you want to put it in context, uh, over 100 years ago, he's a millionaire when he graduates from college. A millionaire uh, when he graduates from high school. So as a gift, he gets this little gift from his parents, and they send him around the entire globe for a trip. So he traveled through Asia and the Middle East. He traveled through Europe. And while he was there, something was stirring in his heart. And he had a growing concern for the hurting and the lost of this planet. He wrote home a letter to his parents. He says, I'm going to give my life to prepare for the mission field. And after making this decision overseas, he takes his Bible that he had with him that he read daily. He opened that Bible at the back. There's a a fly leaf in there on a blank page. And he writes down two words in the back of this Bible. And he writes, no reserves. From there, Borden went to Yale University because he had graduated high school. He spent the summer traveling. He went with purpose and determination. During the first semester, he began a Bible study prayer time with freshmen. By the end of the first freshman, his freshman semester, 150 Yale students who were freshmen had joined him in that prayer meeting time weekly. By the time he graduated four years later, 1,000 out of Yale's 1,300 students were in the prayer meeting Bible study weekly. What happened to Yale? Beyond that, he did ministry on the inner city streets of New Haven, Connecticut in a ministry called Yale Hope Mission. All of this was set in the context of his call to foreign missions, which soon focused on Muslims in China. Upon graduation... From Yale, Borden was offered numerous high-paying jobs because he was sharp and his family name. He turned down every high-paying job because he was called to the mission field. At this point, when he graduated, he took that same Bible. And there where he saw no reserves, he wrote down two more words in that Bible. No retreats. Next, he went to graduate school at Princeton. He was ordained to the ministry. When he finished his studies from Princeton, he set sail to China, but he went through. He was sent by China Inland Mission. Some of you heard of that. He stopped first in Egypt to study Arabic to be able to minister to the Muslims in China. And yet while William Borden was in Egypt, he contracted cerebral spiral meningitis in less than 30 days. He was dead, 26 years old. Before his death, knowing that his steps of this life would take him no further, he took that same Bible, he turned to the back, and there where he had written no reserves, no retreats, he wrote two more words, no regrets. Church for 35 years. Leanne and I have lived our life the best we knew how to serve the Lord and serve you. As honestly as I can speak, we we have served with no reserves. We've, We've emptied the tank at every time we could, as honestly as I can speak. And through the years, the best I know, we've had no retreats. We've been knocked down more than a few times, but we just got back up. Sometimes winning is just holding your ground. No reserve, no retreats. And we can truly say before you today as pastor and wife, we don't have any regrets. I can't think of any way that we'd rather live our life than giving it to the kingdom of God from this corner through Thompson Station Church. We love you. We have no regrets.
We've got one more little item we need to take care of. Church, would you just be seated, please? Sam and Katie, would you join us? Leanne and I have a couple of gifts that we would like to give. And uh, so we've asked Katie and Sam to join us. And so I'm gonna, I'll, let, uh, I'll let Leanne go first for Katie. So I'm just going to read straight from my paper here. <laughs> I have two gifts for you this morning, Katie. One is this alabaster jar. It came from Jerusalem and it reminds us of when Mary, of Mary and Martha, poured um, the oil out of her alabaster jar and anointed Jesus with it. I'm giving this to you as a reminder that you are the perfect pastor's wife for Thompson Station Church because you are the perfect wife for Sam. You will bring to this role who you are. Um, the fragrance in your jar is unique to you and it is a beautiful fragrance. And when you pour it out, Jesus will be honored. My second gift is my own bag of five smooth stones. <laughs> I've gone all over the place giving people five smooth stones. <laughs> and um, they come from a conference that I led a long time ago that um, was for pastor's wives. And I called it, um, what did I call it? Armed and dangerous. I'm a woman of God. I've got five smooth stones and I'm not afraid to use them. <laughs> And it was based on the story of David and Goliath. And so in this pouch are actual stones um, and they, mo they represent these things. There's the stone of contentment, finding our satisfaction in Christ alone. There's the stone of confidence, anchoring our confidence, not in ourselves, but in who we are in Christ. And the stone of perseverance, determining that there is no quit in us. The stone of faith, trusting that God really does got this and the stone of intimacy with God knowing that this is the secret to all the rest of them so Katie now you are armed and dangerous <laughs> and I have a blessing that I want to speak over you contentment is recognizing the abundance God has lavished on you as you choose gratitude over complaint you will keep your enemy behind the impenetrable wall of praise Christ-centered confidence will give your heart a thrill when hard stuff comes to knock you down because you'll see that challenge as an opportunity to trust him more. Refuse to let your enemy mess with your mind and heart knowing that there's no quit anywhere in there. Don't ever forget who you are. You are a child of the Lord God Almighty, author of creation, giver and sustainer of life, ruler of the universe. So rise up to this honored position and engage your faith. Face each day with fierce determination and courageous strength. God is with you. This is his best plan for your life and he will walk with you every step of the way. I love you. Sam, I have two gifts for you as well. The first of the two gifts, Sam, I'll give you is a cross. It's not just any cross, Sam, as you hold in your right hand. Sam, this is the cross that was in the very first baptistry in 1990, placed there in September, built and installed by Billy Barnhill. Billy and Sharon were the first couple I ever married and the first couple that ever were baptized in that baptistry. And so as I challenge you on this day, Sam, your job, your calling, your mission, your passing is connecting people with Jesus. Paul tells us in 1 Chronicle, 1 Corinthians 2, For I have decided to know nothing among you except Christ and Him crucified. And Jesus said in John 12, When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw people unto myself. Sam, lift up Jesus. Connect people with Jesus. And this second gift that I have is, is uh, it's a beautiful gift. This gift is a carpenter's belt. This is not any car, it's not any, just any belt. And it's not brand new. It's well worn. It is used 
That is a belt that was given by, to me by a member of Wildwood Baptist Church who came here in 1990 to work on this, and I had no tool belt. This tool belt has been used in each of the four buildings that we built with volunteer labor in 90 and 93 and 96 and 99 around my waist as I worked 40 hours a week building and then did sermons and ministry in the evening and weekend hours. It's also been used on several home projects. This tool belt represent, represents hard work from not hundreds but thousands of people who put in thousands of hours to build what we call the beautiful Thompson Station Church on this corner this day. Sam, I challenge you from Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, whatever you do in ministry, in life, in husbandry, in daddying, do with all your heart, working for the Lord, not unto man. Sam, today I challenge you to train your team and your church to preach Jesus and Him crucified. I challenge you to go to work, work hard for the cause of Christ. Nothing is greater than the kingdom of God. Sam, I challenge you, preach Jesus and work hard and take the church with you. Thompson Station Church, will you follow Sam as he preaches Jesus? Will you stand with Sam and Katie as we go into our greatest days? Our greatest days are ahead to the glory of God, preaching Jesus and working hard across the street, across the stage, across the seas. do one more thing church just keep standing and we'll be done I know I know we've gone a little long but it's a special day in the life of our church in the lives of these four standing leaders who've been talked to if you're on one of our ministry teams our senior leadership team and spouses y'all come here real quickly church we can't leave this day on February 1 this couple will lead us and friends the work they do cannot be done in the mind of man must be done in the mind of Christ. Must not be done in the flesh. It must be done in the spirit. So church, would you extend a hand towards Sam and his beautiful bride? And we're going to pray over them. Sam and Katie, we love you. We love you. We love you. Leanne will pray and then I'll close. Pray with us. Father, we thank you so much for such a time as this. Mm. Lord, we thank you that right now in this moment that you are just demonstrating how big you are. Mm. That um, before time began, you set things in motion. And Lord, um, you bring the right people at the right place at the right time. And God, I just thank you that Sam and Katie have yielded their lives and surrendered themselves to you. And God, you alone know the future of Thompson Station Church. You know the ins and the outs, the ups and the downs, the struggles and the victories. But Lord, you also know that you um, have called this couple to, to lead. And so God, we just trust you that you're going to give them everything they need to be all that you have in mind for them to be. And Lord, we look forward to the continual, um, tremendous, beautiful work that Thompson Station Church does as she represents literally the person of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And to you, Lord, we give all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Hey, church, would you just pray? Would you pray out loud after me? And only do it if your heart is in it and you can believe it. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for Sam and Katie. Bless them with wisdom. Give Sam courage and boldness and an open heart to hear from you, Lord, and to guide us well. Give us strength as a church to support this couple and to follow well our new pastor. We love you, Jesus, in your name. And all the people said, amen. Sam and Katie Landreth, your new leaders, February 1.
Hey, you're going to be out of here in 30 seconds. And, uh, but I heard something else is happening today. <laughs> hey, well, we love you guys. We're grateful, and it's an honor. And we got a party tonight, whoop, 5 p.m. Whoop. We'll see you there. <laughs> All right, 5 o'clock, y'all come five back. 5 o'clock. Have a great day. Sam told me I can have that belt back when we do another remodel. Bye, y'all.